Good morning, Wesley Mechanicsburg United Methodist Church. Today is November 8th, 2020, and our sermon title for today is Faith Before Politics. I hope you had the opportunity to read our scripture today from Matthew 26, verses 20 through 30. It's a story of the uh, Last Supper and Judas's betrayal of Jesus. Well, what a relief. Election day is over, and it appears as though we have a winner in this year's presidential election. Of course, controversy over this, this uh, election is going to continue into the future, but at least uh, polling sites like Wesley Church made it through it uh, without too much difficulty, unless you consider the tape that damaged the floor in... Uh, in the fellowship hall to be a, uh, a difficulty. I trust that everyone had the opportunity to vote. They say that voting is a civic duty, and, and I, uh, I agree with that, I'm sure, but I contend that what you do to prepare for voting in the days, weeks, and months, even years prior to an election is just as important as the act itself. There is no benefit to voting without first thinking about the uh, implications of a election. There's my slide for that one. In other words, your faith should influence your politics, but your politics really don't need to influence your faith much. In today's passage, Jesus isolates Judas as the one who will betray him by prioritizing politics over faith. That's what Judas does. Judas was a staunch radical of the day. He was known as a Zionist. He was far left or far right, I'm not sure which. But his desire to see Jesus lead his people in revolt against the oppressive government was primary to his life. And don't misunderstand, the Roman government was oppressive and the Roman authorities did abused their power. They did take advantage of the people. The Jews could have benefited from Jesus' leading of a revolt or a revolution, but that was not uh, Jesus' plan, and that's why Judas ended up taking things into his own hands. Interesting that communion is closely wrapped up in the story of Judas Iscariot and his betrayal of Jesus. If you can imagine, well, you don't have to because you can see the uh, painting here, Michelangelo's painting, The Last Supper. The story of the painting is all about Judas and uh, the answer to Jesus's question when he says, well, when he says, one of you will betray me, and the disciples are saying, is it I, Lord? Is it I? When you look at this painting, can you find Judas? I'm going to show you where he is. There he is. See, he's the guy there with the money bag in his hand. And everybody is, is uh, answering, trying to answer the question, uh, who is it that uh, is going to betray Jesus? Communion, in this way and at this time, became the new political party, as, and Judas wanted nothing of it. Jesus calls the communion the new covenant, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. To Judas... Only one party was sinful and in need of forgiveness, and that was the Roman oppressive government party. You see, Judas was an extremist who put his political agenda far ahead of his faith in Jesus. Judas represents sinful human nature, of which we are all composed. He made the mistake that we might make when we put our political affiliation uh, ahead of our faith, I'm sure we do it from time to time, to a greater or lesser extent. It only comes naturally. First, we start with our political affiliation, the uh, whatever affiliation we were born into or of our friends and family. Then we think about which party might benefit us specifically, and our people specifically. We might say, what does a political party do for us? Or which political party is the path of least resistance for us? And after we've answered these questions, then we work our faith into that framework. But that is backwards. 
that is not helpful that way. Society encourages us to first think about our politics and how politics will benefit our own clan, our own, our own people, and then work our collective faith into that framework. But that is backwards. That's what Judas did. Judas started with his political ideology and then tried to work his faith into that framework. And of course, Jesus didn't fit. He tried to fit, uh, Judas tried to fit Jesus into that framework, but Jesus didn't fit there. It was like trying to force a square block into a round hole, like you see here. So instead of discarding his political party, Judas discarded Jesus because Jesus didn't fit into that ideology, the politics that he already had. We do the same when we have a stronger political affiliation than we do a faith uh, affiliation. We fall into the Judas trap when we are 99% of our view on a, a certain of our view on a political hot button issue, but we're maybe 50 50 on issues of faith. For example, let's say we start with our strong feelings about abortion or capital punishment, border security or immigration. Let's face it, most of us have uh, strong feelings about these things. And you'll be able to find a scripture that supports whatever stance that you might have. But if you're immersed in scripture first, worshiping every day before you develop your strong opinions about things, you're much more likely to develop your opinions in solidarity with the Holy Spirit. Faith comes before our politics. If I'm over the top stressed about the election and the election results right now, then I may have fallen into the Judas trap. So here's my big idea for today. Avoid the Judas trap by starting with faith first and then fitting your politics into that framework. The good news is that our lives do not have to be filled with stress and anxiety over this election or the implications of this election for us. Think back to the story of the Last Supper. The scripture says that Jesus was reclining at a table with his disciples. Why wasn't he stressed and filled with anxiety? Because Jesus knew what we're trying to learn today and every day of our lives, that our faith is secure, that God is in control. Once again, avoid the Judas trap by starting with faith first and then fitting your politics into that framework. Even though uh, Jesus' government... The Roman authorities were preparing to put him on a cross. His faith was secure. Politics didn't influence his faith. His faith influenced his politics. The Bible says that God is the one who puts leaders in their place anyway. So no matter how long this process takes for us, God is still the same God. God is still in control. Let us pray. Great God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we gather here today in your name to celebrate our communal desire to put you first. Help us to prioritize our faith in you over our fears in this life. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light, and that great light is you, O Christ. Heal our sick, honor our slain, we pray. Renew our brokenhearted people for your name's sake. Amen. People of God, go in peace and serve the Lord with gladness. Amen.